Hi guys. Hope you had a good weekend. We're back with another session, session 15 this time on seizure activity. Today we're going to talk about uh, seizure activity and its causes, types of seizures, assessment and intervention, care planning. But more than that, because we only have a limited time, if you would like to know more about seizures, I suggest you go to dearnurses.net and enjoy reading Simplifying Seizures. First, we're going to talk about what causes seizures. There are so many different causes. Seizures may be caused by trauma, by a stroke. This patient has an embolic stroke. She's having a seizure. It may be caused by things like meningitis, electrolyte imbalances, brain tumors, a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And it may also be caused by the induction of certain drugs like things like heroin. Now, the most important thing when you have a patient having a seizure is securing the airway. You have to secure the airway so that patient does not wind up having the tongue obstruct the airway. One of the ways in which you can do that is turning that patient onto his side so the tongue does not have the control to obstruct the airway. Another thing you don't do when you have a patient who's having seizures is trying to pry a tongue blade into the mouth of that patient or put an artificial airway in. It's just not the right thing to do. Another cause of seizures is hyponatremia, which I just discussed, electrolyte imbalance. If you should be that nurse who suspects your patient is having a seizure, because sometimes it's not always that easy to tell, here are some of the things that you can do. Check for air, the airway for patency to make sure the tongue is not obstructing the airway. Turn that patient onto its side. Remove any object that might stand in the way of that patient injuring himself when he starts jerking around. And then after the seizure, you give some oxygen to that patient. You assess the level of consciousness to see how conscious the patient is. And because some patients take a while, they go into that postictal state after they've had a seizure and don't always wake up right away. You check their vital signs, the respirations, the blood pressure. You ass after your assessment, you document this information. And also do not forget to document the character and duration of the seizure. If it was a grand mal, whether you saw those jerky, clonic, tonic movements, describe it all. And of course, I suggest after that you get some help and go and notify the doctor about what is happening with that patient. Let's not forget to do that. Don't just say, well, I saw a seizure. That's not good enough. It's very important that you do everything that you can to make sure that patient is secured not to have another seizure. And there are many medications that can be used to control seizures. And that will also be discussed in Simplifying Seizures in DearNurses.net. Now, what exactly is a seizure? Well, we know that the seizure obviously originates in the brain. And one of the things about a seizure is we do know that it's an uncontrollable electrical outburst of neurons. And the movements are not voluntary. These patients are having involuntary contractions. They really cannot control themselves. Some of them might wind up falling to the floor and becoming unconscious. Some of them even become incontinent of the bladder and the bowel during a seizure. They have these wild jerky movements. It's very frightening. Then you might have patients who will tell you that they had an aura prior to a seizure, meaning like a bright light or so just seemed to bring it on. That is true. Some patients do have an aura. They can almost tell you when they're about to have a seizure. I'm going to discuss another type of seizure that you might see in some patients called a partial seizure, which is a focal one. Several years ago, I took care of a patient who used to have these because she had a tumor that involved her motor in that part of the brain where motor activity uh, initiates. And what would happen to her, she would reach to pick up her cup and her arm would just start shaking out of control because according to the neurologist, it was affecting just that area alone, the motor strip. So that can happen, just a focal seizure, or maybe you might see someone twitching in one portion of the face only. And then, of course, it's very important for us to talk about how can we as nurses take care of a situation in care planning. If a patient is going to have seizures, what can we really do so that we are aware this patient is a patient having seizures and what to do to prevent damage for the future? Like I said, there are many medications that patients are given to keep their seizures under control, and the lab values are done also. 
And I might as well let you know that pregnant women suffer sometimes from something called preeclampsia, which causes a rise in blood pressure and um, blood, uh, they spill protein and sugar in the urine. They can also wind up having seizures. Some of the things that we can put in the care plan is uh, padding of the bed rails, which means that if a patient is having seizures, they're not going to wind up injuring themselves. Some other things you can do is you put in the care plan maintaining a patent airway, oxygen, suction, put a sign over the bed saying seizure precautions, like we said, padded bed rails. You keep the bed rails up at all time if you know this patient is potentially in danger of having a seizure. Keep the head of the bed up. And of course, patient and family education is also important. Like I said, there is more information available to you if you take a look at uh, simplifying seizures in dearnurses.net. Hope that you've learned something today about seizures. Have a good week. Stay posted for more topics coming soon.